What's the best case of instant karma that you've ever seen? My dad told me this story. He was driving back from the shore when traffic got real bad. About a mile ahead, there was an accident that had brought traffic to a crawl. Crap happens and my dad decides to be patient about it. Others weren't so patient. People began driving on the shoulder in order to get ahead of the traffic. This upsets my dad. We all know how this goes. We do the right thing and are punished for it. Whereas these guys are skipping in front of traffic and will probably get away with it. He thought about following this stream of cars onto the shoulder, but he decided he would do the right thing and wait. As he got closer, he saw two cops in a parking lot. One cop was directing all of the shoulder drivers into the parking lot, while the other wrote all of those drivers' tickets. He describes it as one of the most satisfying things ever. Story 2. Many years ago I went to an amusement park with my friend on a beautiful summer day. As we got closer to the exit ramp leading to the park, traffic starts backing up because of the amount of people with the same idea. Same thing happened as in the other story, where people started peeling off into the shoulder to get around the line of cars waiting. The fact that some people were already doing it seemed to entice others, until the line on the shoulder came up to just a few car lengths ahead of us. We keep slowly moving forward, but the cars on the shoulder aren't. I'd assumed that it was just a situation of them not being able to merge back into traffic, but as we got to our exit, we found there was a single cop car parked at the end, and there were a few cops walking down the line of cars writing tickets. I don't remember what we did at the park that day, but I often think about those cars and smile. I feel like learning how to drive somewhat recently has really helped me appreciate these kinds of stories. Impatient people getting what they deserve? Ooh beautiful. Impatient people on the road getting what they deserve? Perfection. Story 3. I used to be a zookeeper. This woman was making fun of our llama for looking ugly. The llama was a rescue who had corrective jaw surgery. She pointed and laughed at our llama. The llama spit in her mouth. I gave the llama a treat and told her that she was a good girl. Story 4. I was working in a supermarket when panicked customer A comes up to me, and he says he had accidentally left his cash in the ATM and had anyone handed it in. I was about to say no when customer B appeared behind him and said that he'd been trying to catch up to him. He'd been queuing behind him at the ATM and saw what happened, so he'd got the money for him. It was 200 pounds, so a decent amount. Customer A was super grateful and offered him some of the money, but he wouldn't take it. Customer B then bought a scratch card, scratched it, and found he'd won 5 pounds. Not a whopping amount of karma, but hey, karma nonetheless. I was really hoping it would be something more than 5 pounds OP. It's instant karma and it's good, but very itty bitty. Story 5. Jerk kid in middle school kept trying to steal my cell phone. It was a cheap flip phone, but he would do it just to upset me. Our school had a rule that you couldn't have your phone out in class. Teacher left the classroom for a second to have a brief word with an administrator. Jerk kid grabbed my phone. Teacher came back in a moment later and caught him red-handed with my phone out. She wouldn't believe it wasn't his phone, and he got detention. Story 6. I worked at a grocery store. I was stocking instant noodles on a big display. All I had was a cheap, small, two-step stool. You know, the one with the bar that runs across the top step? Reaching down to the stool from the shelf I was standing on was about three feet. I had a 60% chance my foot would land on the top bar and collapse the thing. I asked a coworker to use his shoulder as a handle as I got down. My supervisor called me a princess for getting assistance. Soon after, he was stocking the 2-liter Coke bottles on a sales display. He tried to get down, he took the 40% success rate jump onto the step, hit the top bar, the step ladder collapsed. He broke his arm and took down half of the display. I just clocked out and left before they told me to clean up the spilled soda all over the place. Something about the usage of the word princess makes me more upset than if it was just like wimp or something. It's like, why, why use that word? I don't know, something about it bothers me more. This dude got what he deserved. Story 7. That time I had my shoes stolen. I was 17. Went to a party where there were kids from two different high schools. When I went inside, I took off my brand new Nike Air Mata shoes that I had just bought for $140. Hours later, when I went to leave, my shoes were gone. We had an idea of who took them, a guy from the other school, but didn't have proof. I was so sad and so embarrassed, I had to drive home in my socks. Long story short, a week later, Monica, the girl who threw the party, shows up on my doorstep holding something behind her back. Turns out she went to a party and saw the guy who stole my shoes wearing them. When he took them off after a smoke break, she snagged them. Now, standing in front of me, she reveals my Nikes. She told me the best part was watching him look for them just like I had and then leave in his socks. Well, well deserved. Stealing someone's shoes is just so, is so stupid. They're not even like super expensive shoes. Like yeah, $140 shoes, they're not cheap. They're nice. But they're not like $500. They're not 
super collectible or anything. You just liked them and took them. Who does that? Story 8. Jerk I knew in high school was trying to get a mentally handicapped kid to do stuff for a jackass type of video in a very nasty, cruel way behind the gym. I'm sitting behind a car smoking a joint in the parking lot. Special kid is not dumb enough to play this game. Jerk decides to let him hold the camera. People are heckling and calling out suggestions. Nothing interesting happens. Then someone comes out with a basketball, puts it on the concrete sidewalk, and then hands the jerk an aluminum baseball bat, and mimes hitting the basketball like splitting a log with an axe. Jerk winds it up, brings it down, and I hear a whack. His head is shooting back blood everywhere. From where I was and how much weed I smoked, I thought he had smashed his skull. Bat clatters like 20 feet behind him and he goes down backwards. The bat bounced, nailed him in the eyebrow, split it open, and knocked him out. He was okay, but had a scar and a hell of a black eye for a few weeks. And the whole time, the mentally handicapped kid that he was trying to humiliate on camera is filming and laughing so freaking hard he's crying. Security didn't believe no one hit him till he showed them the video. Story 9. In the UK, kids wear blazers and ties to school, and a common bullying tactic that jerks used was to run up to the kids, pull on their ties so they get knotted really tightly. On the bus home, the bus was really full and I was standing in front of one such bully. He grabbed my tie just as the bus had to brake sharply. He lost his footing and the only thing keeping him upright was the fact that he was holding my tie. He had grabbed the wrong bit. It wasn't knotted. I simply untied it, he fell on his bum, and that was the last time I was knotted. Story 10. While working for the fire department, on a call for a multi-vehicle rollover accident on the interstate. We got on the interstate one exit away, running into traffic. So we moved over to the emergency lane with the lights and sirens. We were about halfway there and a BMW pulls in front of us trying to cut through traffic. He didn't even look. I laid into the air horn and he came to a complete stop with his middle finger out the window. I'd seen a lot of people do stupid things when seeing lights coming at them, but this guy was just being a jerk for the sake of being a jerk. He got out of his car and started screaming at us. Meanwhile, he was blocking the only fire engine and two ambulances available. People were really hurt half a mile away, and he was making his stand because we honked our air horn at him for blocking us. I looked out at my mirror to see a highway patrolman running between lanes towards us. He was pissed. BMW boy was immediately arrested. His pretty car got pushed out of the way into a ditch, and he went to jail. The people in the accident were hurt bad and two cars had to be cut open to get people extricated from bent metal. It was frustrating. I honestly don't think this is enough karma for that guy. Stopping an emergency vehicle with lights on should just... I don't know. I don't know what the punishment should be. It's just the stupidest thing I can imagine. I'm sure that all of you have some ideas that uh, wouldn't be so advertiser friendly. So if you have them and I see them in the comments, I guess I'll, I'll just have to read them, you know? Story 11. At a job as a mechanic, I got a part that was completely correct, except the electrical plug was a different shape. I found out after I installed it. For the record, it did plug in just didn't have long enough prongs to communicate. I had to order the right part again and take this one off and install the right one, all the while only getting paid to put the correct one on. Lost about 1.3 hours. My coworker laughed and said, I bet you won't make that mistake again, pay attention next time. His very next job, he put all four tires on backwards. Some tires are directional. Said the same thing to him. I knew I would use it against him, I just didn't know it would be that soon. TLDR, I made a hard spot mistake, dude made fun of me. His very next job, he made an easy to spot mistake, and I made fun of him. Story 12. One time in middle school, this guy who was relatively new at our school was making fun of a girl in our class who fell in the hallway in between classes. Coincidentally, this was a girl I had a crush on. He was a little bit of a class clown and was mocking her, making her look stupid and clumsy. Apparently, he misjudged his footing and while attempting to jokingly ape the way she had fallen, actually fell for real and landed squarely on his back in front of everybody. He broke his arm in the process. Passing him by in the hallway, I saw him just lying there, surrounded by adults and staring up at the ceiling, face completely expressionless. He didn't come back to school. Pretty sure he moved after that. I would have too. Story 13. I was driving into a construction zone where three lanes converged into one. Right at the point it became one lane, a car tried to pass me on my right. I slowed down so he wouldn't hit me, but he ran over one of those metal lane dividers. It got caught up in his back right wheel and went around a few times. I could see and hear it make a mess of his fender. Last I saw, he was pulling over to inspect the damage. 
Story 14. I've got two. Can't really decide which one is best. 1. Driving to work during a snowstorm. Pretty much everyone is taking it easy because snow. Some guy in an Infinity FX35 thinks that he's invincible. So he comes driving down the road probably 15 miles an hour faster than everyone else. So he goes past me and I don't see him again until the fork in the road. Mr. Superhero went into the turn too fast and slammed into an iron fence at the triangle dividing the two streets. He was fine because he was outside of his car, looking at it with a look of confusion. 2. Was driving home one night around 10 p.m. I'm stopped at a red light in front of a shopping mall about midway down the block. The east and westbound road is separated by a pedestrian island. Someone pulls up next to me at the light, looks around, and drives through the red light. Suddenly, from the opposite side of the street, red and blue lights, a whoop whoop of a siren, and an NYPD SUV hops the island and pulls the guy over. The police weren't camped out or anything, just waiting at the red light on their side of the street. Right place, right time. Story 15. Saw a guy in a gorgeous sports car, Ferrari, I think, honking and yelling at a pedestrian in the crosswalk. Pedestrian had the right of way and was crossing during the signal. Immediately after they passed, the guy guns it and darts around the corner and rear ends a cop who is in the middle of writing a ticket. There was a truck parked on the street that was just enough to obstruct Ferrari guy's line of sight through the turn. It was glorious. I didn't even see it happen. I just heard the crunch right after he turned the corner. Story 16. Not a case of bad karma, luckily. My friend and I were walking out of Walmart when a homeless man asked me for money and food. I don't ever carry cash on me, so I said I'm sorry and don't have any and go to walk away. However, I had worked earlier that day and still had unopened snacks in my car. So I walk back up to him and say, I don't have any money, but I do have some snacks and water in my car that I can give you. His face lit up. So I walked to my car and grabbed the snacks and walked back. I hand him the bag. It had a granola bar, two bags of chips, some crackers, and two water bottles. He thanks me about 20 times and I tell him to have a good day. So I go to my friend's house and we're just hanging out, and I'm scrolling through a citywide selling page on Facebook. I had just bought a new king-sized bed and didn't have a bed set for it yet. I came across this beautiful solid wood frame with built-in drawers that was in perfect condition. The seller had listed it for $100. She was selling it because it didn't fit in her new house. So I have my husband and some friends get a truck and we go to get it that same day. I give the lady $100 and she mentions that, I meant to post it for $1,000 but mistyped. Since we already agreed on the price before I realized it, you can have it for $100. And that's how I gave a homeless man food and good karma greeted me with a practically new bed set for $100. Story 17. I was driving home on the highway during a horrible blizzard at night. The roads were extremely slick and dangerous. I was going about 30. My daughter was a newborn and it was the first time I had ever driven in the snow with her. I was nervous. Some jerk in a huge truck is doing 65 passing everyone in the slow lane and just being really risky and ignorant to the conditions and other drivers in general. He passed me and I was like, you're gonna crash, bro. Right at that moment, the dude fishtails, loses control and crashes into a ditch. Don't worry, I'm not a sadist, he was completely fine. I know this because I saw him emerge from the truck and do a little angry freakout dance. His truck wasn't fine. That's what you get for endangering others during a blizzard. So what's the thought process on these people? Do they see everyone else going slow and they're just like, oh, they don't know how to drive in the snow. Me, I'm Big Man McManson. I know how to drive. Because that's what I imagine. It's the only thing I can think of that makes sense. Story 18. One time I saw a truck swerve to purposefully hit a cat. It was the type of trunk that you see where the dude is clearly compensating for something. Huge tires lifted with the testicles on the back hitch. Well, he successfully hit the cat and it splattered all over his truck. And it wasn't a cat, it was a skunk. Story 19. Late to the party, but since this appears to be all mainly karma to jerks, I'll share my story. I was in high school walking back from lunch when there was an older gentleman who had crutches in front of me. He couldn't manage to get off the road since the curb was high and he obviously had leg injuries. All the school kids were walking past him, so I did what I thought any decent person would do and went over to him and just gave him a helping hand so he could continue on his way. No big deal. As I walked on, I got flagged down by a woman in a car who had watched the entire incident, and she informed me that she was the head teacher principal of a neighboring school and had been at a meeting at my school. She phoned up my school and explained the situation to my head teacher. As soon as I got back in for lunch, I was brought in by my head teacher and thanked for giving the school a good name. Apparently our school doesn't do much good. Got an extra hour for lunch and a certificate at a school award ceremony. I know it's not as interesting as some of these others, but every little bit helps, eh? I gotta say, the jerks getting instant karma is satisfying, but the good instant karma? I think I like it more. I just like hearing about people doing good things and being rewarded for it, that's all. Story 
February 20. My roommate is very nosy and judgmental about people's intimate lives. At the beginning of the first semester, we went to dinner with our sweet mate, who is quite a few years older than us, just in order to get to know her. Somehow we got onto the topic of teenage mothers, and our sweet mate admitted that she got pregnant at 16. My roommate said something along the lines of, I would get an abortion so fast, I'm guessing you didn't want to keep it either, only to find out that our sweet mate had a miscarriage. It was an awkward meal after that, but it was so refreshing to see her get shut down like that. I hope she learned a lesson. If there's one thing I learned in life, it's that you do not make any assumptions about any pregnancy ever. You are asking for trouble. Story 21. When I was about 16 and my brother was 12, we lived on a ranch. We had horses, cats, dogs, and chickens. Because of the horses, we had this thing called a lunge whip. It's basically a long, flexible pole with a length of rope at the end. My brother and I were waiting for the horses to finish eating. Lil Bro was dragging around the lunge whip at first to play with the cats. But then, Jerk starts snapping the whip near the cats, mostly to irritate me. Hey, don't do that. Mom already said that you weren't supposed to. And if you accidentally hit one of them, I'll beat you up. Lil Bro looks me in the eyes and says, I do what I want. He flicks the whip once more and it snaps back and hits him straight on the dong. I have called him Dong Bruise for years. Story 22. After a few days of getting absolutely destroyed at the blackjack tables at Foxwoods, my friend and I spent our last night getting hammered. Went back to the room and decided to order some room service. He ordered and I went to grab some water from the vending machine. In the hallway were two old ladies, one of whom was having a massive seizure. I had just taken a CPR slash first aid course a year or two earlier and had jumped in. Rolled her to her side, fished out her dentures, arm up under the head, had her friend hold her in place, and ran back to the room to have my friend call security to get EMS up here. They got there and took her away. She was awake and alert as they rolled her off. Next morning, we decided to hit the tables before we left. Not only did I win back all my losses, but I left up about four grand. Okay, this is great. I'm glad OP helped out here, but I'm just confused. I thought during a seizure, interacting with someone's mouth, trying to pull something out of it, or just putting anything near it is a terrible idea. I don't know how else to fish out dentures, though. And I guess dentures would be a problem during a seizure, so OP probably did the right thing, but I just need someone in the comments to tell me that. Story 23. Was skiing at Breckenridge. They have a T-bar toe lift. For those who don't know what that is, it's basically a big upside-down six-foot-tall uppercase T, which is pulled by a cable. You hold on and it slides you up the mountain. The T-shape allows for two people to hold on to either side of the crock of the T. People fall off of this all the time when they're not used to it, which gives locals a sense of superiority. Well, one brave boy, maybe 12 or 14 on a snowboard, set out to handle the T-bar. He lost his footing about 30 seconds in but held on despite being dragged. This happens often, but usually only for a few seconds as most have good enough sense to let go. Instead, this boy was dragged up more than a thousand feet on his belly. I was behind him as was another couple. We could not believe he was holding on. Well, the T-bar stopped further up for someone else. Didn't stop for him. And he was too exhausted to stand up and fix his situation. But the couple behind him have been laughing so hard that when the T-bar abruptly started again, they fell off. Bottom line is, he made it to the top. They did not. Story 24. I was walking home from work one day. On my way, I have to cross a busy intersection. I was crossing on a green light and someone pulled up to the corner intending to turn right. Without looking, she was looking towards the stopped traffic to see if any of them were moving, not sure if she realized it was a green or not. She turned right in front of me. I was close enough that she nearly ran over my toes. The second after she turned, she saw me and flipped me off. There was a cop a couple cars behind her that saw the whole incident. He pulled her over and checked if I was okay before sending me on my way. I think the best instant karma is the right place, right time stuff. Just having that happenstantial world influence just being like, no, you have been wronged and I will fix it. Anyway, I hope you also enjoyed these instant karma stories. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.